DCM 2000 or the DSL um, dual super lead. This is the 50 watt version, DSL 50. It's probably in the last few years I've gigged with this one more than anything else. It's, uh, it's kind of a two channel amp. Well, it, well, it is a two channel amp because there's a there's a there's a there's an ultra gain channel and a classic gain channel. And both channels have, have a kind of switching uh, method, so that the the classic gain channel, which is probably what you call your clean channel, can be set to either clean or crunch. It's kind of the classic Marshall um, crunch that you'd expect. And then you can go to the ultra gain. Um, and you, you you can switch between lead one and lead two, so so basically you you, you get the idea. You're going from um, clean to crunch to um, heavily distorted and all again. And uh, I generally don't go past on the on the ultra gain channel. I generally don't go over three. There's a there's a gain console there. It generally doesn't go over three. And on the on the classic gain, the clean channel, the, the gain control doesn't go over around about two and a half. As I say, there's a clean and a crunch on the on the classic gain, and I tend to stick with um, slightly crunchy, very slightly crunchy. It's it's probably the best the best sound you can get on this amp is, is go on that, on that clean channel and use the use the um, the crunch and then there's a, I use a boost for, for solos the, the, that's the, the ultra gain is really good as well and um, this is probably in many ways my favorite sounding amp um, There's a, there's a question of, of, of reliability, I think, because it, it's probably been in maybe four times since I've owned it for some sort of repair. The last time the, the transformer was, was replaced. So, um, touch wood. <laughs> touch wood, I had no problem since. Um, it's, it's a kind of all singing, all dancing amp. We've got the, well, as I say, we've got the classic gain channel. There's a volume and a gain control there. The switch in the middle is for clean and crunch. Then we've got the channel switch, which obviously you do with a full switch. Um, so green is clean, red is, is overdriven. The ultra gain, we've got a volume and a gain on there. And the switch in the middle, lead one and lead two. And then we've got reverb which I, I almost never use, unless it's for, you know, some sort of recording. Um, if I do want to use a reverb, I've got, I've got the, you know, I'll use a pedal. And then the EQ, bass, middle, treble. Um, there's a tone shift, which I don't really use. And then a deep switch at the, at the right at the end there. So loads and loads of um, options on there. And what I've tend to find over the years is that regardless of, of whatever amp that you use, I, I've, I should say that over, I've, I've owned, um, right, right from the beginning, I've had, I've had a Vox AC30, I've had a 60s uh, Copper Top AC30, I've had a Mesa Boogie Mark II combo, um, there, was a, there was a British amplifier called the Sessionette, I used that for a while too. Uh, and then in the time since then, all those amps got sold. In the time since then, um, I've used PV, Blackstar, uh, eventually moving on to this, which uh, I really love this amp.
regards to all the options on there, and what I've found over the years is that there tends to be a kind of you you get this range of of, of tones available with with a given amp, and you kind of operate within this area. So this being clean, this being gay, then there's probably two settings you, you might use of this, this side of clean and this side of gain. And you only operate within these two parameters. What, what I mean by that is largely all of this becomes redundant. I, I suppose I suppose if you're recording you can you can go for a specific type of sound and dial it in and, and record that into your uh, into your door and uh, you know just to suit a particular song but when it when it comes to live performance the amp generally stays at the same setting so and you start to think well do i really need all this and should the amp just be something that you can adjust the volume on and, and maybe and maybe the treble and the bass or something like that or a, or, or a bit of a gain control so that you're always operating within that within those parameters this this does cut through quite well. It gets a little bit fuzzy if the if the gain is 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 too high, um, and the sound gets lost a little bit. You you on stage like this trying to listen to see where, where, whether you're actually on or not, because the the, the bass and the drums are soaking up all the frequencies that the the guitars are uh, operating in. Um. I do use a foot switch with this to change between channels. I will give you a little bit of a demonstration of what it sounds like. <laughs> So now I'm on clean, I've got the bridge pick up. to pick up a little bit of gain in, in, in that. Kind of early thin Lizzy cut. I should say I've got the amp set really low for uh, for obvious reasons. It's a 50 watt amp and it packs some punch. So this is the actual clean with no crunch. Clean with crunch. It's quite a pleasant break up on that one. It just takes you from the hard clinical um, cleanness to just give you a little bit of a bit of 
bite in there. Proper Rory Gallagher kind of sound. <laughs> Take that gain up. switch to the uh, ultra gain channel entirely different character <laughs> so I'll just take that gain back up on the on the classic classic gain channel I'll switch to the ultra gain Again, channel. Big beefy sound. Ultra gain. And therein is is really the, the, the main issue, I think, with with this. And there there are millions of, of options when when you're buying an amp. You can you can. I think it's it, you get lost in in hammer of the of the new product or an advert that you see or a, on a. Uh, your favourite guitar is playing through a certain type of amp, and you, you've got to have that amp. Uh, but there's almost unless you could, unless you could test drive an amp, take go to your, go to your um, dealer and say I want to buy this amp. Can I can I take it out and do a gig with it? He's going to say no. There's there's a, there's a one or two. There's one range of amps in one brand of amps in particular I can think of where. Um, You'll take it and play it. It sounds great. It's a really fabulous sounding amp. Clean channel, gain channel. It sounds sounds brilliant. And you'll think, I've, I want to get this amp. And then you take it to your gig and you plug it in and the band starts playing and it, it disappears. And um, there's quite a few amps like that. It's just the, the kind of, all the frequencies going on in the, in the, in the ensemble. The, the guitar's got to live somewhere in that upper mid range and be able to cut through the mix effectively. Well, some amps don't do that. And uh, you become this white noise. The thing with the, the classic gain has got some real cut and it, it cuts through the mix. Well, when you use the ultra gain, that side of the amp doesn't, doesn't cut through as well. I'm just a little bit too close to the transformer. I'm getting some buzz. But generally, when you play on stage, it's really quiet in that respect. So, as I say, I tended to find it was a better option to use the classic gain and, and put the gain quite high and use that as my overall channel. But then I, I needed a clean. So, I'm using the ultra gain channel as, as my main channel with the gain fairly low, as you can see, as I say, it's, it doesn't go past three. Uh, and I'd use the, the clean channel to foot switch between the clean channel and, and the gain channel and just use a, a, a pedal for, for gain. Uh, there's different pedals I've used over the years. Uh, there's a Electro Harmonics Germanium Fuzz which works really well. Absolutely puts a, puts a nice bite onto your, onto your lead sound that cuts through really well. The OCD also, I use that one quite a lot. As you can see, I'm, I'm using wireless. If I just put the amp into standby, we've got two foot switch options one for reverb, one for channel, and then there's a effects loop. And there's a loop level, which I really like. The blend between the two, the affected sound and the and the, the, the clean sound of the amp. Um, so, loudspeaker outputs, 8 ohm, 8 ohm, 16 ohm. 
Uh, there's one. There's one op- option for the four ohm speaker. You can switch eight ohm to four ohm. And then you've got your slow bow fuses, and obviously the mains. Um, I think the main reason I don't use the reverb is because I've got the foot switch, which only controls one channel. So I need. It's in good condition considering the amount of use I've put it through. So I, I as I say, I love this amp. I just, I just, uh, I just wish it would cut through a little bit more on that gain channel, more effectively, I should say. Oh, well, they don't make these anymore, anyway. So there you go. That's my review. It's not so much a demonstration as much as as, as it is a review of the amp. Just in case you're thinking of buying one. So, um, anyway folks, that's the end of the vid, and I'll see you next time.